Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial series for using the early notation typesetter. In this video, I'll be going over the basic layout here. So let's start over on the right here. This is our main panel. You can see up here we have four tabs available, account, file, actions, and symbols. On the account tab, you can log in and if you choose to do so, connect a Patreon account, uh, which if you choose to back the project will give you extra perks such as additional fonts. You can also access this video tutorial series at any time with this button or the written reference materials. You can view the current version number and a short but very important disclaimer below that. Next up we have the File tab. This is where you can manage this particular project here. Here is the Save button. This saves your file as a proprietary.ent format. This is the raw data of the project. You can save this uh, locally to your computer um, and of course reload it later or even share it with other uh, collaborators or colleagues as needed through the load functionality here. Um, note that Ent does not currently allow saving to the cloud, uh, nor does it have any sort of autosave feature. So if you're using this, be sure that you save manually, regularly. You can also export your project as a PDF with this button. PDFs, of course, can be widely shared and viewed on a large variety of devices. Beneath that, we have our layout controls. Here you can select the font. Note that if you are not a backer of the project, you will only be able to access the Tinny font. Oh, and you must be, of course, uh, logged in as well. These fonts are based on the uh, style of individual uh, typesetters of the particular fonts that they used. Um, in different regions and different time periods. So we can cover Italian fonts, uh, French fonts, Low Country, German, um, etc., all from different periods of uh, the time period of typeset music, um, even up to the 1800s. Beneath that, we have some controls uh, that allow us to tighten up or tweak the layout, such as changing the staff uh, line type being, should it be clean, should it be rough, squared or rounded, the staff scaling if the uh, music is too small or too large, uh, based on whatever we're typesetting, the spacing between the staves and the spacing between the individual pieces of virtual type. So you can use this, for example, to create continuous uh, smooth lines, or to have very widely spaced lines, all to match the way the music was originally typeset, if you desire to do so. Beneath that, we have some basic paper settings. You can choose uh, what paper size you're using, uh, manually change the margins on the top, bottom, left, and right to tighten things up, or change the composition as needed. Uh, as well as choose the paper orientation, and Ent will kind of uh, reflow the line to make your music work. Beneath that, we have a print preview function, which will get rid of all the guides and turn all the notes uh, black so that they appear as they will when printed. This is very useful for checking composition or um, just getting a good view. And beneath that, we have a PDF viewer. Now this is a pretty cool feature we just added in this version. Here we can go and select a file and it'll open the PDF in a little uh, window up here. I can click and drag, make it a little bigger. Um, and we can use this, I'll zoom down, find a, a little music here. Zoom in nice and large. So if I'm working on typesetting a piece, I can pull it up here nice clean view and work directly off that without needing to open a separate um, PDF uh, viewers. So it's great if you're working on a compact uh, screen setup 
or if you're working with something like music that has text under it and you need to try to match the spacing, um, which can be quite tricky otherwise. You can close the print preview here. Note that the actual appearance of that will change a little bit depending on what web browser you're using. Each web browser has its own PDF viewer uh, built in. Next we have the Actions tab. Now at the moment this is just basic stuff like copy and paste. Um, mainly here for people using tablets uh, or touch uh, computers. In the future we'll be adding stuff like um, changing note values uh, or um, transposition for example. Finally we have the Symbols tab. These are all the available non-note, non-rest symbols in our font. Now each font may have a slightly different representation of symbols. For example, um, not all fonts will have the same time signatures available. It all depends on what was in use at the time and what occurs in the original documents. Note that down here at the bottom we have these spacers and blanks that we can use to, uh, for example, insert some blank line to fill things out or create indentation before starting our piece. I'll be going over more of how to use these in a practical context in the next video, which is on entry. Over here on the left, we have all of our notes, which you've probably been uh, looking at these. So these numbers right here are the hotkeys for these notes corresponding 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And those determine, of course, the note value. There is also a uh, space button, or you can press the space bar, which changes from notes to rests. They're corresponding rests, except in the case down here we have the perfect longer rest. And we also have a tab button which changes uh, to use the blackened form or colored forms of the notes as needed. Note that these hotkeys also appear over here on our symbols. For example, we can insert a C clef just by pressing C on the keyboard, um, a sharp by pressing plus or X, um, etc., as marked here. There's also a ligatures tab here. This is a feature which allows you to build a ligature from scratch. You can build pretty much any ligature um, in existence using this tool. Uh, and you build it note by note. So you can build an eight note long ligature. You can build a 20 note long ligature. Everything's uh, possible to do here. And I'll be going over how all of that works in a separate video on ligatures. Well, I hope you enjoyed this first introductory video. Uh, I'll see you in the next one, hopefully. Uh, we'll, we'll be doing some basic entry. Thanks for watching.